Hello and welcome to Beanworks University. This lesson is only for Beanworks system administrators. Only system administrators can set up and modify approval channels. Setting up approval channels correctly is essential to get the correct person approving purchase orders, invoices, and payments. To set up and modify your approval channels, click on the gear icon in the upper right corner and choose Settings. Approval channels need to be set up for each module. For this lesson, we're going to use the Invoice module as an example. Click on the module in the top menu when in the Settings area. You will be in the Approval Channel area by default. Most companies set up their approval channels for each legal entity with different approval rules for each company. However, if you only have rules around dollar value and it's the same people that approve invoices across all legal entities, you can set up your channels at the global level. Here's an example. We will show you how to create these channels at the legal entity level, but setting them at the global level is the same overall process. In most cases, the first step is to select the legal entity for which you want to create approval channels. We already have one approval channel in here and now need to add more. Press the Create Channel button to begin setting up your first channel. The name and description just helps you easily identify your channel. Channels are listed in alphabetical order by name. If you need to use an amount to define your channel, set that here. If you only put in a value into minimum, then it means any invoice above this amount. If you only put in maximum, it means any invoices less than this dollar amount. Putting in both a minimum and maximum value means any invoice in between the two values. You can set a negative amount for your minimum to cover credit memos. Next, pick the legal entity that this rule applies to. Finally, select the list, lists, or org units that will be used to define the rest of the channel criteria. We recommend picking one list or the org units to create most of your approval matrix to keep it simple and easy to manage. Here, you're choosing what type of criteria your approval channel will use when defining the approver. There may be a few other channels with other lists to handle exceptions, which we'll talk about a little later. If you use a list or the org units to define your approval channels, when you're done adding all of the channels, it's crucial that all the list items or org units are associated with at least one approval channel. If you don't do this, then if an invoice is coded to a list item or org unit not listed in your approval channels, because there's no channel associated, it will not be possible to submit it for approval. Let's select org unit for us to make our approval channels. Since we already have one approval channel for this set up, that entity is going to be set up by org unit. Once you have set up the structure of your channel, you need to add your list items or org units, as well as the approvers to the channel. Click on the pencil next to the org unit or list to open up all available choices. Moving items from the left to the right selects them. You can add as many list items or org units to the same channel as long as they are all approved by the same people in the same order. Here you're defining for your criteria which conditions should be met for this channel to be used. Once you have selected your items, press Save. Next, we need to add approvers. Click on the pencil next to where it says Approvers. Again, available approvers are on the left and selected approvers are on the right. The order of the people on the right determines in which order they will get the item for approval. So for example, if I want someone to look at an invoice after another person, their name must be second. I can drag them around to get the approvers in the right order. If there are several people and any of them can be the approver, then making a group by dragging one name into the other name until a box is formed around both names will let any of them approve. In this example, I have Juniper giving the first approval, and then it can either be Jack Stock or Tom Green that gives the second approval. As soon as one of them gives their approval, the invoice will be through that channel. Continue creating your approval channels until you have a rule for every org unit or list that you use as your main approval channel. So here's an example of a completed set of approval channels in another legal entity. You can also create an approval channel with multiple criteria, such as a dollar amount and multiple lists. This would be more common for unusual approval workflows, not following general flow. Set it for special reasons when someone extra wants to see some specific invoices. Here's an example. I created an approval channel that, if an invoice is over $500,000, it's coded to some specific GLs for inventory and is also coming from some specific vendors. Then it needs to go to the warehouse manager and the controller. Once your approval channels are created, you can always edit them. If you change the users in an approval channel, the invoices currently in that channel will go to the new users added. It will not go to the people that were previously in the channel that had not given their approval yet. If you change the list items or org units by clicking on the pencil for the list of items, 
the invoices currently in the channel will still need to finish the flow with the users in the channel, even if the list items on the invoice no longer match the approval channel. New invoices submitted for approval will of course only go to channels that match the criteria currently defined. Once you have created your approval channels, your implementation specialist will review them with you to make sure everything's going to work as expected. Your approvers should be instructed to notify you for the first few weeks if they're assigned to the wrong invoices. Okay, so thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, please contact Beanworks Support at support at beanworks.com.